Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you're having a blessed day in the Lord. Hallelujah. Give him praise and give him glory. Well, first of all, I want to tell you all that um, I had trouble getting up early this morning. Um, actually have challenges, but you and I both know why. You know, whenever you're getting ready to do a, a powerful fast like this, it's always going to be some warfare. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying up in here. And so I do have this mini Bible study that I want to present to you guys. So I won't say a time anymore. I'm just going to say that every day I'll be on here. Praise God. Praise God. Those that have a prayer life, definitely be praying. Um, this is praying time. So I'm going to take my time with this. No, no, no. Y'all understand. This is praying time. Um, God was dealing with me at two o'clock this morning. He said, um, even before then, God says, Deanna, Notice the time frame that I called this fast. Well, you all know that Halloween is one of their heaviest moments of witchcraft, um, divination. I mean, y'all acting, y'all understand what all this evil stuff is about. It's actually because this is their highest month. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I was like, God, that was very good strategy. So that's why one of the reasons we're going to be fasting from the 21st to November the 4th high time. That means God is going to wake some of you up at two, three, four o'clock in the morning when they're doing their witchcraft. You're going to have to pray. You see in each city, each state, I've explained this before, but I'm going to explain it again. The reason why the amount of warfare and the level of demonic uh, oppression is because of what isn't being done in the spiritual room. You see, you can talk a good game all day long and a lot of churches, that's what they're doing. A lot of people, that's what they're doing. They're talking about it, but you have to be about it. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. See, I'm not impressed with the numbers that you have. I'm not impressed with the money that you have. I'm not impressed with what you think you have. I want to know, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you understand spiritual warfare? Are you in the secret place? Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Because it's in the secret place that you're going to come out your power. You see what you do behind the doors. I'm talking about praying, fasting, getting on your face, going to the threshing floor. That's the power of God. All this stuff that you see, accolades and all this other stuff, honey, that's worldly stuff. No, no, no. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me walk this thing through this morning. I feel the power of God already. So I'm going to start with my first scripture. And it says, Luke 4, 1, coming from King James Bible all the time. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led in by the Spirit in the wilderness. So if you see my title, it says, Being Sensitive to the Spirit of God. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. God wants you to become so sensitive to the Spirit of God. Let me tell you something. Um, people that are sensitive to the Spirit, they know the Spirit. Oh, I'm going to walk this thing out. Let me give you another scripture. John 12, 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. I'm going to read that one again. John 12, 49 says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment that I should say, what I should say, excuse me, and what I should speak. People of God, if you are not saying what thus said the Lord, oh, come on, somebody, you don't have to be a prophet to say what thus said the Lord. We should be speaking what we hear our father say. Everything else is just your opinion. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying that. No, we kind of need your advice a little, but we need all of God's words. And that's what I want to talk about, too. I want to talk about number one. Our spiritual sensitivity flows out of our relationship with God. Number two point. I have two points. Sensitivity of God's presence positions us to be ready to minister to others. People of God, we cannot do this just off the head. Now, the enemy, he tries to make you think that intelligence and book knowledge will help you to work. Yeah, you can minister to a certain point. But to be honest with you, that's just words. God says, my kingdom is not just in word, but in power. In order to have effective, I'm talking about Holy Ghost power, where there's healing and deliverance, a manifestation, a dutimous manifestation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You have to understand the power of God. You have to walk in the power of God. In order to do that, you have, must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to read it. One more scripture. It says, Psalm chapter 10. I'm in Psalm. The book of Psalm and 
I'm in chapter 10, Psalm 10, I'm sorry. Verse four says, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Let me tell you something. What's in you will come out of you. But we're talking about the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. I said, God, what do you want me to talk on today? He said, Deanna, my people don't know my voice. He said, they don't even know my ways. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. And I'm not gloating. I got to tell you, and God is the one that tells me to say things. I don't ever just give stories because I just want y'all to be impressed with me. Come on, somebody. I'm not that great. But God was letting me know something. When I was left in Mississippi, I went to this um, church. I don't remember the pastor's name or anything but when I walked in the church I felt something but I was like okay God I'm just gonna sit down because what we do is we want to be led by the Holy Ghost come on somebody hallelujah and so when I sat down the pastor just kept staring at me and I knew he felt my presence but what he did the next five minutes, it kind of shocked me because most people don't do this anymore. So you have to be led by the spirit of God. He said, um, church, I want you to know that y'all know I'm already led by God. He says, so I'm going to do something that's unorthodox. And he says, woman of God, would you come up on here and just give us a word? And I just looked cause he had never met me. He didn't know me. And he, one thing he said before I got up, he says, you carry the presence of God. I'm going to say it again. He said, you carry the presence of God. I couldn't understand why people don't like me instantly. And I'm just going to be real with you. I have walked in stores and I've seen some people like they, like they want to fight, you know, and I'm, you know, uh, I, I'm going to tell y'all something because, and let me address this. I'm coming back to the story. Um, somebody made a comment when you're on your lives, you get so, mm. let me tell y'all something. I'm a warrior in the spirit. That's what I do. So it ain't a worldly connotation when y'all see me. This real. I'm bold. I'm bold. I'm bold. And guess what? I mean what I say. And I say what I mean. Oh, I just said something. So getting back to the story at hand. I told what thus said the Lord. And when I left, I said, God, I said, you did that. I said, as soon as I walked in, you let him. So that man could not do that unless he already had a relationship with God, being sensitive to the spirit of God. People of God, that's why we have a world that's topsy-turvy. So many people, let me tell you something. Let me t slow this thing down a little bit. One of the things that the enemy is doing is he's bombarding people. He has came of course, he's already in the church. You know that that's where he comes from. Come on, somebody. He comes from God. So that's what they do. Y'all wonder why so much turmoil in the church. Cause that's where the enemy come from. Remember God made him come on somebody. Hallelujah. You got to look at the whole picture. So that's the first people he's going to attack is the children of God because he hates us. He feels like we have taken his place and that was his fault. Nobody told him to want to be God. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. So he's dead in the church. So here's what he's trying to do. He has gotten people to think on a more intelligent level. That's why you see everybody wants to be a doctor now. Think, think about it. Everybody, every, every church connotation these days, it has to do with intelligence. Who has the most degrees? Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to walk this thing out and some of you going to get offended. Guess what? Go to God. Um, who has this? Who has that? God never made it that hard. Jesus Christ said, keep it simple. I, 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 I wish that you just had the spirit of my father. He said, because I do, I say and do what my father say do. I'm not moved by men. I don't care what men are doing. I don't care what everybody's doing. I'm going somewhere with this. The masses think about it. They all do the same thing. Oh, I'm gonna walk this thing out. Everybody wears Nike because what? Everybody's wearing Nike P women. Everybody's carrying a Michael Kors. It's like whatever trend, I'm going somewhere, whatever trend it is, that's what the church is doing. That's not the way God called us to be. He called us to be separate. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You got women in the church, and I'm going here. Y'all are allowing these young women to tell y'all how to dress. Y'all sitting up here making all these videos trying to impress the young people when God have commanded a thousand generations to teach that word, live by that word, uh, say that word, preach that word, the commandments of God. And the commandments of God is saying, come from the world, be ye separate from the world. Come on somebody, hallelujah. But you can't do that if you are a follower. Let me tell you something. 85% people are followers. God is looking for people that will lead. God is looking for people that will hear his voice and go. He said, will you still say yes to me when I ask you to do what is required of thee? When I ask you to go to a people that will not like you? When I ask you to preach to a person that may not like you? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying this morning. 
This is all about being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And, and the reason why people are not sensitive to the Holy Spirit is because they're full of the world. And that's not bashing people. You have to, somebody, thank you, Lord. Um, I'm a chef. So I'm going to talk, talk chef with y'all. When you're making a cake, if you don't use the right ingredients, what's going to happen? The cake is not going to come out right, right? You have to use the same ingredients. Don't you understand that the enemy has came in and he has watered down the church because the same ingredients he knows will be effective because it will do what God have called it to do. Because guess what? He says, on this, on this rock, I will build my church. He built it up on disciples. We're supposed to be discipling each other. We're supposed to be speaking the word of God. We're not supposed to be speaking what the world says to speak. Everybody wants to be worldly. And then you get mad when us true ones come at you. Oh, you're judging. Oh, Skippy, I'm judging, baby. Yes, I'm judging. I'm watching your every move. Because if you ain't right and you're dirty, you're dirty. Jesus called it out. Jesus did not skip, baby. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He called you what you were. You were saved. Cool. You were sanctified. Fine. If you were full of evil, he said it. You generation, you vipers of snakes. Hallelujah. It's real like that. It ain't judging. It's real. It's real. Because somebody has to have the authenticity and the sensitivity to tell the truth in this latter hour. Because everybody's trying to be like the masses. Everybody wants to have a bag of money. I, I, like I told y'all yesterday, I was on this woman's lap. I'm not going to say her name yet because God didn't tell me to. And I mean, she was just a going. She was just a going. And, and, and hold on. I don't do that to try to bash people. I love people that have the spirit of God. I don't care who you are. You have the spirit of God. I'm rolling with you. God bless you. You can be known or unknown, but I'm going to tell you what's happening. It's called manipulation in the flesh. Oh, come on somebody. I'm going to walk this thing out. It's manipulation in the flesh. What they do is they set standards and they say, well, this is what we want y'all to do. They came in with the prosperity message. Not everybody's trying to do this protocol protocol. That's what stopped the um, spirit of God. We're going to do protocol because if we do protocol, we're going to uh, limit the Holy Spirit and also the presence of God to where people would not be changed. So now you got fast food churches. Think about it. People have services, eight, 10, 12, four services. Why do you have that many services? You mean to tell me you love that much people? No, you're trying to get people in and out, get that money. Let me tell you how the old church used to do it, which is the authentic church, and you cannot stop it. You, I'm going to say it again. I don't care who you are. You cannot stop God. You can't stop the originality of God because God is a dimensional God. God is a God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. You can't change God. You can change your little services. You can change the scripture. Or you could do whatever you want to do. He says, I am the great I am who I am. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You can't change him. And I'm saying that they've come and they've changed the way we do church, but we are the church. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And God says, I have a remnant that won't change. I have a remnant that won't compromise. I have a remnant that's going to tell y'all the truth. Hallelujah. So now you got fast food churches to where people are not being healed and delivered because they're not being sensitive to the Holy Spirit because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, said God. That's why people are not being healed and delivered. That's why you can sit up there in sh with shades and on your phone in church and looking Facebook and all that stuff. Because if you had the true spirit of God, first of all, you wouldn't go in there with shades. Second of all, you would turn off your phone. Third of all, you wouldn't be dressing like you skimpy. Oh, come on somebody. I'm on one this morning. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Talking about, well, you know, God working with them. Let me tell you something. When there is an unfilling, an uh, indwelling of the Holy Ghost, you change the way you walk, you change the way you talk, you change the way you treat people, and you get closer to God. There must be a manifestation. Let me tell you something why the church is getting food in this hour, because you have got complacent. You think everything is God, but God say, test the spirit by the spirit. And if it don't have my spirit, that ain't me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So we're going to go back to the oracles of God by being with God. How you develop the spirit. Jesus, he did it all the time. He said, wait here while I go. He went up the mountain and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Do you know what Jesus was doing? Because the Bible says that the first of all, the spirit led him to the wilderness. The reason why the spirit led him to the wilderness, Jesus, I need you to stick with me because you got to go back and go to the cross, but more so you're teaching disciples. So you need to hear my word. You need to be in, in doused with me. 
me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. People are not being endowed by the real authentic spirit of God. Because if we would see that, then we would see revivals. I'm talking about true revivals. I'm not talking about these made up revivals where you pay people to be in a wheelchair and then you tell them to come out at a certain time. Y'all better quit playing with God. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell y'all, y'all better stop playing with God. Oh, God have mercy. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. When God is on one, he on one and I must be obedient. I don't know why I got to say this, but I'm going to say what God told me to say. Mr. David Teller, Prophet David Teller, stop playing with God. Y'all know I don't call out names until God said it. David Teller, stop playing with God, says the Lord. And this is an open rebuke, sir. Because I've already, I've already inboxed you probably and told you. I know you don't know me personally. Stop playing with God, say God. That's a, that's a public warning now. That's an open rebuke. So that means you didn't went too far, sir. Y'all better quit playing with God. Y'all better stop playing with God. Y'all better stop playing with God. God is nothing to be played with. Hallelujah to his name. So let me get back. I don't know why he wanted me to call out your name, but I'm being obedient. That means you're in trouble, sir. You better repent to God. Hallelujah. Y'all better quit playing. All right. So let me get to what I'm saying. The, the only way you can be sensitive is spending time with God. We have to go back to spending time with God. And the only way you can spend time with God is you have a relationship with God. And the only way you can have a relationship with God is you got to get in his word. You got to get with God on a personal level. You got to fall in love just like you fall in love with a, no, actually not like you fall in love with a man or a woman because that's lust most of the time. You have to fall in love with God just because God, I don't care if you do anything else for me. I love you, God. God, I need you. God, I want you to change. Most people come to God only when they need something or when there's some a traumatic experience, God says. God says he is he has feelings too. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to sit with you. He wants you to learn of him. He wants you to become like him. He wants you to obey his law, said the Lord. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I'm telling you what God says. But he says they're not sensitive because, oh, this good. Let me tell you what God said. Why y'all seen so much murder and evil? They're desynthesizing y'all. You know, if you look at it a lot, you, you it becomes the norm. Oh, I'm about to go here. I didn't know I was going this way, so I got to flow with the Holy Spirit. Y'all want to know why that y'all seeing more and more people disrespect black people, like even in neighborhoods now? Since they killed Trevor Martin. Y'all notice what's been happening? It's been going up because they're trying to get you used of it again. Anything that you get used of, then guess what? You get a tolerance to. So if you get a tolerance to it, then it don't bother you. Y'all wondering why these kids are feminine people dying? They're seeing so much violence. They're seeing so much agonistic ways, God says. God says they're seeing so much evil that they're getting used of evil. I'm going to say it again. They are training you to get used of evil because this world is evil. But thus said the Lord, I have a remnant that will not get used of what the enemy is trying to do. We are going to fight it. We're going to come against it. Come on, somebody. Because just like Jesus said, I hear what my father hear and what he tells me to say. And I must say what he tells me to say. This is becoming sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You have to be sensitive to the spirit in this hour. You have to know what God's saying. You have to know when God said to move. You have to know when God said to stay. You have to know when God said to pray. How can you minister unto someone else if you don't know the spirit of God? How can you yourself get delivered if you don't know what to do? Oh, come on, somebody matter hallelujah God says they must learn my spirit he says those that worship me worship me in spirit and in truth you must know his spirit so you can hear the truth that's why the enemy is operating in lies because he's the father of lies and he deal in lies you can't trust a lying person or enemy come on somebody hallelujah so God says Deanna in order for this to happen they're gonna have to fast more they're gonna have to pray more they're gonna have to intercede for each other more they're gonna have to walk in love all of that is the qualities of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Being sensitive to the spirit of God. Y'all call it. Let me tell you what true love is. True love is telling you about yourself before you die. Because if you die in your sin, you will go to hell, said the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And not telling you it is blood on our hands, said the Lord. So when there's real love, he said, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Come on, somebody. He said, I call you my friends and I tell you the truth. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell y'all something. It is time. It is time for the remnant to stand up and say what thus saith the Lord. Because, um, let me ask you something. Y'all see how many people are dying? Y'all see how much death is taking over? All these people are not going to heaven. That's the church fault. We should be turning this 
world upside down by the spirit of God, by the power of God, by the presence of God. If it is, let me tell you something. If you don't have the presence of God, even in your church, then you are not preaching God. There is another entity. Come on, somebody. It is demonic entity that have entered into the churches. And if you are in such a church, I, su- I, I'm t- I suggest you run. I suggest you run fast, said the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. I'm not going to play. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, she said, can the liquid fast be done taking medication? Um, I will always say this and, and I don't ever look down. So the thing that you can do is ask God, my sister, I don't want to tell you anything like that because you know, your body and God knows your body most. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't ever just tell people what to do on a fast. I say, always go to God because the Holy spirit going to lead you and guide you in what you should eat, what you should not eat. But I tell you one thing, never be afraid because one thing about God, when God truly calls a fast or anything of that nature, I promise you nothing will happen happen to you if you listen to him notice what i said do exactly what the lord says come on somebody hallelujah and you are so right apostle dominique satan is an angel of light and that's what people don't understand they're wondering why so much um definition is in the church supernatural power which i'm gonna talk about later on they have supernatural power too just like god is supernatural so guess what it's gonna be false miracles false healings false this and that and they have the audacity to do it like it ain't nothing not understanding that guess what remember judas <laughs> remember all the ones that came against remember pharaoh you have your day and you have your reward said the lord come on somebody hallelujah so i want to pray some prayers before we get off of here and i want to also say something else um Somebody had asked me, they said, um, why don't you stay on long? Oh Lord, let me tell you something. Did you know that God gave me an answer to tell you another answer? How long did Jesus take to heal people? Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. How long did Jesus take to heal something? The enemy has gotten people thinking if you stay on Facebook about an hour or two, you got the power of God. Uh, I guess what I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus Christ. He dealt quick, fast and in a hurry because he had the power of God. As a matter of fact, I'm reminded of the lady of 12 years. Oh, come on, somebody. She was bent over. She said, but if I just yet touched the hem of his garment, oh, come on, somebody. It was done in five seconds. Oh, hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm saying. The true power of God. All you got to do is stick and move, baby. All you got to do is say the word. As a matter of fact, you ain't got to show up. God sent his word and he'll, I'm trying to tell y'all something. Don't be fooled by lengthy preachers oh i'm just trying to tell you what god said hallelujah i'm gonna just do what god said i'm gone i'm not trying to impress nobody y'all better understand what time what time it is the enemy is doing a good number on people you have to be thank you lord in this last days even the elect should be food so you have to be very careful is it the spirit of god and ask god i don't care if it's me father god is this you because if it ain't you i don't want to be involved come on somebody hallelujah because that's how people get tainted so let me go ahead and say these right quick this is prayers for self-deliverance i break all all generational curses of pride, rebellion, lust, poverty, witchcraft, idolatry, death, destruction. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Failure, sickness, infirmity. Hallelujah. Fear, schizophrenia, and rejection in the name of Jesus. I command all generation and hereditary spirits operating in your life through curses. Everybody that is bound is, I'm going to tell you right now, that spirit is cast out in the name of Jesus. No more witchcraft, no more black magic, white magic. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. I come against it all by the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command all spirits of lust, perversion, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, immorality to come out of any sexual character. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command all spirits of hurt, rejection, fear, anger, wrath, sadness, depression, discouragement, grief, bitterness, unforgiveness to come out of your emotions right now in the name of Jesus Christ of of Nazareth. I command all spirits of confusion, forgiveness, mind control, mental illness, which is a spirit, double-mindedness, fantasy, pain, pride, and memory. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break all curses and commandments of any spiritual. I'm talking about attachments in your life right now. I serve it to the root of that thing. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the power of God. 
God. I command all spirits of guilt, shame, and condemnation to come out of your conscience right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command all spirits of pride, stubbornness, disobedience, rebellion, self-will, selfishness, and arrogance to come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command all spirits of witchcraft, sorcery, definition, and occult to come out of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command all spirits that operates in the name of Jesus that is not of God to come out right now by the spirit of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost. I sever to the root of that thing. I say that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. For God will do what he has called you to do. He will ordain you and sustain you, said the Lord. Hallelujah. I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind, your soul, and your body. You will walk like a child of God, talk like a child of God, be 